Come on, admit it. If you drive, you've probably cursed a cyclist every now and then. Maybe you've even edged the car a little closer to hurry them along a bit. That's nothing. Some people turn homicidal at the merest glimpse of lycra in the distance. The fact is, cars and bikes don't play well together. And with more and more people discovering the joys of pedal power, there's bound to be trouble out there. There's a war of wheels being waged on our roads. A battle between cyclists and drivers. And it's not for the faint heart. This is the daily reality on Australia's busiest roads from a cyclist's eye view. You meant nothing to that red car. Pretty much. And they know that we can't hit them because we'll come off second best, so they'll put the car straight in the middle in our, in our path, absolutely. On the cyclist side, a growing band of enthusiasts like Simon Hookham and Nathan Besh. There is an attitude out there. Definitely, there's definitely a lot of uh, anger at times directed directly towards cyclists, uh, putting ourselves deliberately in danger. Uh, but yeah, we definitely do find a fair bit of that on the roads. A constant fight for road space amid dedicated drivers like motoring commentator Ian Luck. Not wearing a helmet. How stupid. It's really quite amazing, Liz. We've just seen a cyclist overtake a taxi over double lines. Now, that cyclist really is taking a huge amount of a gamble with their life because, as we saw, it was a really a, a very close and a near miss. Many motorists believe that until these lycra-clad commuters are registered and licensed, they simply don't have the same right to be here. They must think they've got special rules or probably some special privileges. I'm confused. I just don't get it. Gridlock. Another typical day in just about any Australian city. Cars jammed in every direction, clogging up intersections and jostling for space and going nowhere. Which might be why when we see those cyclists whizzing by, cutting through traffic, sailing through red lights, we feel, well, let's be honest, a little annoyed. Some even feel downright angry. Cyclists, they've got no consideration for anyone else on the road. Oh, mate, you, you get up in the morning, you know, try to go somewhere, there's 300 cyclists in one lane, you know, and they're all going at 5 k's an hour, so what are you going to do? They get uh, shirty at us if we've got to go around them, yet yeah, they'll cut through lights, cut across us, and don't obey the rules. So. Plenty of cyclists do break the rules. Running red lights is a favourite. Cyclists are entitled to use a whole lane and can legally ride two abreast, but that doesn't win them many friends. In Sydney, a monthly disruption ride across the Harbour Bridge in the middle of peak hour gets motorists so mad that the protesters have to be protected by police. There's no stopping the cycling revolution. From fitness fanatics to families, from pensioners to politicians, cyclists are trying to reclaim the road. One million cars were sold in Australia last year. 1.4 million bikes. The ninth year in a row that bike sales have outnumbered cars. And you never know who it might be under that helmet. Well, I started riding a bike when I was a child. Uh, but I started riding to work a little over a year ago. Work for Christina Keneally means being Premier of New South Wales. I am nobody's puppet. I am nobody's protege. I am nobody's girl. Keneally was vaulted into the top job just months ago, but still does the half-hour ride from her home into Parliament House on most days. They say there is a revolution taking place, that this is not just a lifestyle decision, it has become a mode of transport. Do you agree? Well, I would. Yeah, my own children have started cycling to school. 
I do think that people are recognizing that this is more than just a child's plaything or for the serious you know, road cyclist. This is actually a viable transport option. It takes a little getting used to. Have you broken your bum in yet? <laughs> Well, the padded pants help, and, and a bit of natural padding doesn't hurt either. <laughs> so you're right now, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I guess we should do it. Fantastic. Let's go. <laughs> On the road, the New South Wales Premier becomes just another cyclist. No one gives her a second glance or any special treatment. It's also important to give a sense of what you're going to do. Right. It's no different than the indicator on a card. Well, like, you can go first now. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I've got to admit, riding in peak hour traffic makes me nervous, and it doesn't take long on the roads to see why it can be so dangerous. The garbage bins are in our bike lanes. Bad. Within the next seven years, 10% of all trips in Sydney will be by bike. In Melbourne, even more. But as yet, all roads aren't built for sharing. And that's why things get ugly. But I want to complain about cyclists in Lycra on Beach Road. What is that about? The road war has become a very public brawl. Even celebrities like Magda Zabanski are buying in. It totally infuriates me. <laughs> Opening up ahead. What is the greatest sin of the driver? Deliberately going extremely close to us in a dangerous manner that if we did have to swerve for a pothole and obstruction, we'd go straight into the path of the car and we would be hit at you know, 50, 60 kilometres an hour. Nathan and Simon are well aware of the aggression they face. Every moment they're on the road, they must be alert for the next assault. Are you trying to tell me there are drivers who deliberately try to frighten you, to run you off the road? Without a doubt, Absolutely. Yes. Hit the horn right when they're right at your shoulder, that sort of thing. And also deliberately push us into other lanes and run it, literally run us off the road. They just hate you being on the road. Um, some seem that way, yes. Yeah. Well, there we go. Completely crazy. Right through a red light. I just can't believe it. That cyclist has got no brains. We are going to see a lot more accidents in the future. That's if cyclists don't behave and ride and stick to the road rules. Ian Luff believes all cyclists should be licensed and registered. If people are going to hit the roads, they have to be very careful and, uh, and, and really take responsibility for their actions. This cyclist was riding in a bus only lane early one morning, but took exception to how close the bus came as it passed. At the next stop, he leapt aboard and assaulted the driver. But with no registration or record, he's never been found or charged. I really believe that uh, push bikes should have some form of identification, some form of uh, like a registration uh, to actually identify bikes, because at this point in time, no one knows who they are or what they're doing. They do share the roads, so there should be some form of identification plate. If you want to see how bikes and cars can share the road, just take a look at Amsterdam. Here, cycling is fun and easy. Everyone owns a bike. 80% of the population cycles at least once a week. One of them is Australian expat, Melissa Lennon. This is second nature to you now. This, you prefer this to a car? Much prefer it to, well, especially in the city much prefer it to the car and even with the boys because by the time you've got them packed and ready to go and I was passing the car whereas here you just throw them in and keep them in and you're off and riding basically and you get to wherever you want in um, in a couple of minutes and when you're going up for a glamorous night do you get on the bike yes <laughs> even go to weddings with black tie on a on the bike because it's just so much easier also you can't park 
Here you get taught about bicycling on a very young age. Most children can bicycle before they can walk. Petra Rinders has never owned a car in her life. She runs bicycle tours for visitors. No one wears a helmet because cyclists have their own lanes and run-ins with cars are rare. When there is an accident between a car and a bike, what is the assumption? Car is wrong. Really? Yeah. The, the car is just automatically wrong if it comes to a collision and that gives the bikers protection as well. So yeah, the cars just don't want to hit you because they'll have to pay for all the cost. Well, there's an incentive. Yeah, that really protects everyone and yeah, keeps the cars on their toes because yeah, bikers are more fragile when it comes to traffic. Back in Australia, Nathan and Simon dream of the day they're treated with such respect. In the meantime, they've found a way to fight back against motorists. They've mounted video cameras on their bikes and helmets to record the worst offenders. This will be a blue Commodore overtaking very, very closely. It's frightening. Cars passing so close you can almost feel the whoosh. We're about to see a very impatient taxi drive and he'll cross double white lines into oncoming traffic to make up one space in the queue and stop right in front of me. And their daily records reveal the types of drivers to watch out for at any given time. During school hours, it would probably be the four-wheel drive. Um, early morning, um, normally it's the ute. So the ute, I'm assuming, is the tradie in a rush? One could assume that, yes. Um, that was the one I could feel the warmth of the engine on my, on my arm. These aren't just home videos. Nathan and Simon are prepared to use them as legal evidence. Take aggressive drivers to court and get them off the road. <laughs> Generally, we see a driver that is behaving quite badly and they are putting other lives at risk, say, if they're next to a school, driving quite erratically, then we will make uh, formal statements to the police and put that forward so they will actually have something against their driving record. You're being proactive. You're taking a stand. Absolutely. So that if these people are repeatedly offending, then they're actually taken off the roads. And sure enough, no blinker. He just decides to drive into the bike lane. I'm left nowhere to go except the gutter. The truth is, lives will remain at risk and the war will continue to rage until drivers get the message that cyclists are not fair game. You have a problem? We want to make people aware that if they do have an accident with us, then it will definitely mean possibly wheelchair, possibly death, and most likely a lot of injuries for us and months in hospital. What are you trying to do? Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.